Hello, fourth grade. It is Thursday, the 2nd of um, April, 2020, and we're going to look at um, chapter 10 in our history, lesson two, building a um, better California um, and the growth of industry. Okay, so I am on page uh, 202. 32. We're reading 232 to 235. Uh, you should have your worksheets ready. I gave those to you before we left school in your packet. I'm going to read over the questions so we know what to look for. We have building a vocabulary. The words are progress, promise, rundown, earthquake, and canneries are essential facts. Eugene Schmitz. We're going to look for information about Eugene. Southern Pacific Railroad. Hiram Johnson progressives and charlotte perkins gilman okay and then we have a b c d and e in that section a governor who set up new rules that kept railroad prices low b writer who spoke out strongly to make the lives of children better c a company that became so powerful at control it controlled newspapers transportation and even the state government D, a group of people who wanted to make the government and people's lives better. E, mayor of San Francisco who took bribes and was removed from office. And so our options are, like I said, number one, Eugene Schmitz. Two, Southern Pacific Railroad. Three, Hiram Johnson. Four, Progressives. And five, Charlotte Perkins Gilman. And then on the second page, it says, um, number one, what happened on April 18th, 1906 in San Francisco? Number two, what change did not come about through the work of women? Number three, what did San Francisco decide to rebuild along with its cities? Its city, excuse me. Number four, what did the progressives want to do? And number five, what right did the women in California win in 1911? So we have four uh, choices for each of those. Okay, so let's look at number one. What happened on April 18th, 1906 in San Francisco? A, army troops arrived. Uh, B, an earthquake ruined the city. C, oil was discovered. D, gold was discovered. Number two, what change did not come about through the work of women? F, new schools and better housing. G, safer food. H, higher wages for laborers or J, the defeat of railroad company bribes. Number three, what did San Francisco decide to rebuild along with its city? A, the city's newspapers. B, the city's harbor. C, the city's government. Or D, the city's railroad. Number four, what did the progressives want to do? F, limit the power of big business and make government more honest. G, make the railroads a bigger part of the government. H, give businesses more control of the government. J, keep women out of government. Or five, what right did the women in California win in 1911? A, the right to own land. B, the right to publish articles and books. C, the right to vote. Or D, the right to run a business. So those are the questions that we are um, looking to answer and the highlights of this section of chapter 10, lesson two, called Progress for People. So I'm on page 232. The thinking focus is what problems did Californians try to solve in the early 1900s? The key terms are bribes and progressives with a capital P, so a proper noun. And then we see a picture down here. The earthquake of 1906 was not nearly as destructive as the fire that followed it. One family had set a fancy table with the silver spoon in the china plates and teacups shown here. But the fire's heat turned them into melted ruins. So that's an actual picture. Um, pretty, pretty intense. So let's begin. I have my book here. Most people were still asleep. After all, it was only about five o'clock in the morning. But something was waking the animals. All over the city, dogs began to whine and bark. Horses stamped and snorted. The animals sent something. The sleeping citizens of San Francisco did not. 
Walking his beat in the gray light, police officer Jesse Cook saw it coming. First, a sound like thunder swelled around him. Then the street began to move up and down. It was as, quote, it was as if the waves of the ocean were coming towards me, billowing as they came, end quote, Cook recalled. The city of San Francisco was riding, riding excuse me, a wave of earth and rock, earthquake. Across the city, roofs caved in, chimneys fell, and stoves overturned. Church bells rang and rang as the city rocked. Fires broke out everywhere, but the earthquake had snapped the city's water pipes. Since they were without water, firefighters could only watch sadly as San Francisco burned. But the, uh, the, the earthquake of April 18th, 1906 lasted less than a minute, but the fires burned for three days. In the end, about 3,000 people were killed and 28,000 buildings were destroyed, including uh, San Francisco's City Hall. So um, a very, very horrific and um, disturbing and destructive earthquake, April 18th, 1906. Um, lasted less than a minute, but the main problem were fires. Why? Because the water pipes snapped. And you can't, it's like a hose. You can't get water through a hose if it's broken, okay? Um, so they couldn't get any wa water into uh, where the fires were. And so they burned and burned and burned and burned, including the china and the spoon that we see there at the bottom of the page. So um, let's look at... Um, I think, let me find here. Uh, yeah, the second page, what happened on April 18th, 1906 in San Francisco. We just read that. A, army troops arrived. B, an earthquake ruined the city. C, oil was discovered. Or D, gold was discovered. So we should be able to already answer that question. All right? So let's, um, let's move on from there and look at page 233. San Francisco cleans up. People said the city could, would never be rebuilt. They were wrong. Even before the smoke cleared, the people of San Francisco began to put their city back together. Money, food, and workers poured in from all over the country. William Randolph Hearst asked the readers of his newspaper, the San Francisco Examiner, to give every nickel they could. President Theodore Roosevelt sent army troops and government money. The city's mayor, Eugene Smits, moved quickly to set up the rebuilding. So we see that the federal government got involved. That's the government with Congress, the president, et cetera. They got involved. The um, famous newspaper, the San Francisco Examiner got involved and the city's mayor, Eugene Schmidt. Schmitz, excuse me. So I remember hearing that name on our first worksheet under essential facts number one, Eugene Schmidt. Was he A, the governor who set up new rules that kept railroad prices low? B, writer who spoke out strongly to make the lives of children better. C, a company that became so powerful it controlled newspapers, transportation, and even the state government. Was he D, a group of people who wanted to make the government and people's lives better? Or was he E, the mayor of San Francisco who took bribes and was removed from office? Now, so far, we know that he's the mayor, right? So we've heard that name's. And right now, he's saying that he is moving quickly to set up rebuilding. So it sounds like um, he's doing the right thing. But look at what he says. The mayor of San Francisco who took bribes and was removed from office. So maybe he started out with this heart, right? Setting up things in place to help the city rebuild. But we heard that name, so we need to read a little bit more. But we can probably still answer that question because only E says that he's the mayor, that Eugene Schmitz is a mayor of San Francisco. But let's see what went wrong. It's coming up. Rebuilding the government. These were Schmitz's finest days as mayor. Positive, finest days. But they didn't last for long. For years, Schmitz's city government had been controlled by a few powerful business leaders. These men ran the big gas, telephone, and railroad companies. They gave bribes to the mayor and other city officials. A bribe is money given to someone to persuade him or her to act dishonestly. 
City officials took thousands of dollars in bribes. In return, they let companies like the Southern Pacific Railroad charge high prices. This hurt many California businesses that couldn't pay such costs. All right, so I feel like, um, well, let's read a little bit more. It says that last paragraph. So as the citizens of San Francisco rebuilt their city hall, they decided to rebuild their city government too. A group of citizens worked to stop companies from giving bribes. Many business people and city officials were brought to trial. That means they had to go before a judge as criminals. Mayor Schmitz was kicked out of office. So we can definitely answer the question about um, Mayor Schwip, um, Schmitz in Essential Facts number one. We can also probably answer the Southern Pacific Railroad because we see here that, um, that it started to charge high prices. So we can be thinking, we could probably look at number two, Southern Pacific Railroad, um, and we can find one answer I see here. I'm not gonna give it to you yet because we need to read a little more, but we know that they're a railroad company Okay, we know that they're charging high prices. So let's keep reading and see if we can find out more. All right. So. Let me see here. Let me make sure that. All right. So let's look at page 234. California builds a better government. The big industries that grew up in the early 1900s brought great progress to California. But in San Francisco and throughout the state, some businesses had grown much too powerful. The Southern Pacific became the most hated company of all. Now, the Southern Pacific Railroad, we just started talking about that, how they charged high, high prices. Let's see what else they did. Um, because to become hated, they must have done a lot of things that people did not like and that were not fair or right. Um, it held power over newspapers, transportation, other businesses, and the state government. Finally, one man rose to fight the railroad. His name was Hiram Johnson. He was a lawyer who had helped get Mayor Schmitz out of office. So it sounds like Hiram Johnson was a good man and he was gonna clean up all this um, dirty business that was going on. So let's look again at number two, the Southern Pacific Railroad. And we can see there, we've already answered Mayor uh, Schmidt. So we already um, answered, put letter E as an answer, but let's look at A, B, C, and D to see which one matches the Southern Pacific Railroad. Was the Southern Pacific Railroad A, a governor who set up new rules that kept railroad prices low? Or B, a writer who spoke out strongly to make the lives of children better? Or C, a company that became so powerful it controlled newspapers, transportation, and even the state government? Or D, a group of people who wanted to make the government and people's lives better? Okay, only one of those answers uh, will fit the Southern Pacific Railroad. So go ahead and mark that. Then we see number three says Hiram Johnson, all right? And we heard his name mentioned. Let's read more about him. So we know that he was a lawyer. We know that he helped get Mayor Schmitz out of office. And we know that he's going to, he was one man who rose to fight the railroad, all right? So it says Johnson was a member of the Progressives. The progressives were a group of people across the United States who wanted to make the government and society better. Progressives worked to pass laws that would stop businesses from controlling the government. In 1910, Johnson ran for governor. He promised to kick the Southern Pacific Railroad out of politics. Johnson's promise made him very popular and he won the election. As the new governor, he kept his word he set up new rules that kept railroad prices low and stopped the bribing. The great giant Southern Pacific had been beaten. All right, so Hiram Johnson, a, a local hero in San Francisco. So let's look at Hiram Johnson number three. Was he A, a governor who set up new rules that kept railroad prices low, B, 
a writer who spoke out strongly to make the lives of children better, or D, a group of people who wanted to make the government and people's lives better. All right, so let's think about that for a minute. We know he was a progressive, okay? And progressives were a group of people across the United States who wanted to make the government and society better. Um, we see here that he ran for governor, and when he ran for governor, he promised to kick the Southern Pacific Railroad out of politics. So I see um, there in A, um, I see the word governor, okay? And I, let's read a little bit more again to see if this is a governor that they're talking about. So we know that he won and became governor, and we know that he um, promised, um, his promise made him very popular to kick the Southern Pacific Railroad out of politics. So he won the election, and as the new governor, he kept his word. Now, what was his word? He set up new rules that kept railroad prices low and stopped the bribing, all right? So I'm looking at A, and it says a governor who set up new rules that kept railroad prices low. Hmm, does that sound like Hiram Johnson to you? All right, look at number four, progressives. Okay, so we have two options left. B, a writer who spoke out strongly to make the lives of children better, or D, a group of people who wanted to make the government and people's lives better. So mark your answer for what you believe progressives are. Okay, now looking at page two, we can answer some of those questions. Um, it says... Look at number four. What did the progressives want to do? F, limit the power of big business and make government more honest. G, make the railroads a bigger part of the government. H, give businesses more control of the government. And J, keep women out of government. All right? So it says that the progressives up here, here's Hiram Johnson. He looks like he's a powerful man going to keep his promises. It says here um, that the progressives were a group of people across the United States who wanted to make the government and society better. Progressives worked to pass laws that would stop businesses from controlling the government. Okay, so um, think about F, G, H, or J, and which one sounds most like the progressives, and we're going to read on and we'll probably get an even stronger idea. All right. So we're at women bring change. Oh, let's read about Hiram Johnson up here before we move on from him. It says Hiram Johnson traveled 20,000 miles by car over bad roads during his successful run for governor at while he was campaigning. In other words, at the time, trains were the easiest form of transportation but Johnson was an enemy of the Southern Pacific and refused to ride the railroads. So it would have been so much easier just to take the train while he was campaigning. Easier. Um, but instead, he got in a car and drove 20,000 miles because he did not agree with what the railroad companies were doing to the people of San Francisco. Okay? And not just, you know, not just probably California. Um, but um, probably, in other words, probably people in other states, as they heard about the big railroad company in California, they probably had some strong feelings about that too. Um, and so you, when you take a stand for something, you, and, and, it's, and it's, you know, it's do or die, you're going to, um, like Hiram Johnson, you're going to stand strong and firm and, and kind of push away what you're standing against stand against it by not giving into it. And so we can see spiritually, history teaches us a lot about how to live for God um, and how and how what the, what the enemy does for destruction and what God does. There's a real black and white um, in all kinds of things in, in history, throughout history, things that we were, um, read about and are exposed to through movies or stories or what have you. And then what's happening now in history throughout the world, and then the future, we can always learn from um, the stories of of our past. 
uh, in the world itself and definitely as Americans. And so spiritually, we can see uh, a correlation, meaning there's a connection. If, if the devil wants me to do something, I need to stay far away from that. I need to plant myself on God and what God says, right? And stay away from what the devil wants me to do. And so um, Hiram Johnson stood against what he believed was wrong. Um, and to a great, um, probably really tiring. I know that when I go on long trips, my, as you know, my, um, nearest and dearest friend lives 300 miles away, more than 300 miles away. And, um, when I go and visit, um, visit her and her family, it's, I get tired driving in the car. It's five hours, um, just one way. So that's a 10 hour drive. If I leave on a Friday and then come back on a Sunday, that's just 300 miles. I can't imagine driving 20,000 miles, how tiring that would be and expensive, the gas and, and whatnot, the wear and tear on your car. But he had to do that because he couldn't give in to the railroads. So we need to, how much more should we stand for God and not give in to um, what God says is wrong, the, the enemy's temptation? So a little life lesson from history. History is full of life lessons. All right, so um, think about that, um, just looking at that picture. Now, women bring change. Cleaning up government was mostly the work of men. Women were kept out of government. They did not even have the right to vote. Still, women became a strong force for progress in California. All around them, women saw families suffering. Men, women, and even children worked long hours in places like the canneries of Southern California and the laundries of San Francisco. The pay was so low that families went hungry. Housing was crowded and run down. Often food was not safe to eat. Because women had no power in government, they could not change these conditions. But they had another weapon. They could write. In magazines, newspapers, and books, women called for better treatment of workers and families. Charlotte Perkins Gilman was one woman who spoke out strongly for change. She loved children and worked hard to make their lives better. In a 1908 poem, she wrote about the child's cry for help. Here's her poem. Give me the good ye know, I'm reading right here, that I, the child, may grow. Light for the whole day long, food that is pure and strong, housing and clothing fair, clean water and clean air, teaching from day to day, and room for a child to play. Um, so that really shared and showed her heart. Give them good food to make them strong. Give them a housing that is hygienic, meaning it's not all dirty and full of um, rottenness, um, so to speak, clean water, clean air. Um, and so we see that women were rising up to protect their children and their families from unsafe living conditions, um, a lot of garbage around, a lot of mess around um, that are not good for our bodies, from food that is not processed properly, that's rotten, make you sick. Um, they really wanted to make a change. And because they couldn't vote at this time and they couldn't hold any kind of public office at this time, being government, in other words, they started writing and they started um, walking it out and acting it out and helping each other and helping families and helping their children. And so um, we see here, Charlotte Perkins Gilman was a very strong woman who wrote, it says, strongly, fought strongly and spoke, spoke out strongly for change. And so we see her name. We want to remember her in Essential Facts, page one, number five. So who is Charlotte Perkins Gilman? So look at the option that we have left. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then we could see... Um, in number, well, we're going to be able to answer the last few questions on page two as we continue reading. It says, the writings of Gilman and other women urged the government to make laws that would protect workers and families. Women helped bring about new schools and housing, safer food, and higher pay for laborers. One of the biggest victories was in 1911 when the progressives passed a law that gave California women the right to vote. And now in, t in 2020, um, all women can vote, not just in California, but throughout our nation. All right, so we see a wonderful picture there of the women working hard. Okay, the women working hard. And so um, 
we see that we can answer all of our questions now. Um, and in doing so, honoring um, the women that forged a path for, you know, us girls. Um, so let's look at number two. It says, what change, it says, but what change did not come about through the work of women? Not come about. A, new schools and better housing. B, safer food higher wages for laborers, or the defeat of railroad company bribes. Now, there was one in there that we didn't hear about than what, uh, of what we just read about. We read about safer food, better schools, better working conditions, etc. But one of those options we did not um, read about and the women um, didn't affect. Number um, five on page two, what right did the women in California win in 1911? A, the right to own land. B, the right to publish articles and books. C, the right to vote. D, the right to run a business. So what right did the women in California win in 1911? All right. So looking at your building vocabulary. All right. Think about the words that we heard about and what they could mean. Uh, number one, progress. Two, promise. Three, rundown. Four, earthquake. And five, canneries. Uh, your options are A, a trembling or shaking of the ground. B, factories that put food in cans. Think about, about the word cannery. I have a friend who works in a cannery, and she's working really hard right now uh, during the COVID-19 um, crisis to make sure that people have food that they need. Uh, C, in poor condition. D, steady improvement, meaning getting better. Steady, steady, steady improvement. E, a statement that someone will do something. So again, look at your words, progress, promise, rundown, earthquake, and canneries. All right, so that is our uh, history for today. Um, and um, I want you to look, just in closing, um, I want you to look at page 232 and what destruction looked like. Um, horrible. That's just one part of San Francisco. And then when you look up here on 233, you see that things have been rebuilt and were rebuilt. The people of San Francisco amazed the rest of the country by quickly rebuilding their city. So going from this uh, to this, and that's um, a part of um, who Americans are, um, that we do our best to, when we're in crisis, to rebuild. And so, um, and to help people around the world also. And so I want you to think about that during this time where we're in a difficult situation, um, that we look for ways to encourage. Um, so while you're at home with your family, look for ways to encourage. Um, we might not be rebuilding buildings, but we can build people up in their spirit uh, by getting our work done for our parents, uh, helping out around the house, just enjoying each other, appreciating each other, being grateful for each other. So that's what we can do to rebuild. Um, and then when we get to go back out to the world, um, the light of God is going to be stronger than ever in the hearts and minds of people. He already is moving in incredible ways. And so even though this is a difficult time, God is moving. And I am telling you, um, that so many people, millions and millions, if not billions of people throughout the world are going to be looking to Jesus and giving their hearts to him. We're already hearing incredible stories of people coming to know the Lord during this time because when some, the devil does something dark, the light of God is stronger and it shines even brighter. So God bless you. Um, do a good job on your worksheets today. And I will see you tomorrow with another lesson.